Okay, so um, I thought I'd do a little video today that shows you the accessibility of um, BIM models and taking them across to a photorealistic rendering and virtual reality without any need for any technical expertise or, or really any specific skill set. Um, the, the functionality that we have in tools like Revit 2017, um, Autodesk Live or Enscape for example, um, really do enable you to do some very high-end BIM application use cases without necessarily the need of, uh, of the full technical knowledge. Um, so today we're going to have a look at uh, Revit 2017 running the latest version of, uh, of Enscape. Uh, we're going to show you how quickly we can create visualizations which are very, uh, very photorealistic looking. Um, and we'll also show you how quick and how accessible it is to take it into VR, whether you're using uh, HTC Vive, which is what we're going to be using today, um, or whether you're using an Oculus Rift. Uh, we're just choosing the Vive today because that's what's plugged in in our technology room here at Man Machine. Uh, but it works just as well on both. Slightly different controls, um, but it's essentially the same experience. Um, so I've got a, a model open in Revit 2017. I'm going to face this way rather than facing the camera, just so I can see what I'm doing. Um, but uh, essentially I've got this model open directly inside of Revit. Hopefully you can see my, uh, my big picture. Um, and all I'm going to do directly inside of Revit is, uh, is just come to my Enscape toolbar here um, and quite literally photorealistic render one button. I press the start button on Enscape. This will start the, um, the, the Enscape visualization and literally that is it. I'm going to put the, uh, the keyboard down for a couple of seconds. This particular model I've got open will take about a minute or so to load up into Enscape, mainly because there's lots of RCP elements. Um, and RCP is basically a cardboard cutout, if you like, inside of Revit. But when you take it across into a rendering engine, be it uh, 3ds Max or, um, or Autodesk Live or into Enscape, it converts that cardboard cutout into a, a fully, fled, fully fledged sorry, uh, 3D model. So we can see the, uh, the visualization is loaded up now. Um, I've got picture in picture running because through the, the video camera it probably won't show the, the quality off. But as you can see straight away, it does a really nice job of giving you the lighting and the shadowing and the, the soft shadowing around the model. But uh, it's not a still render, so this is a live render that I can move around. Um, so if we just bring ourselves down to, uh, to floor level over here, I'm just going to come down to where this little pond is over on this side of the model, through the cloud there, and then maybe spin around. Um, I can hit the space bar to turn on gravity, drop myself down to the floor, and we have a, a fully interactive live render inside of Revit. If I leave the keyboard for a couple of seconds, we can see on the top left hand side it goes through an iteration process and it just refines the render to make it look as good as it can do. What I'm going to do is just uh, head over into, uh, into the building, so let's just turn on fly mode so I can get over there pretty quickly. Um, go through this door here, and I'm just going to spin around and stop about there. And again, you'll see that uh, it's got global, global illumination, so as soon as you stop moving, the lighting refines itself and everything starts looking very, very nice and very, very quickly. It's that quick to get a, a really nice live render inside of, uh, inside of Enscape. Um, and actually, what I want to show you is how accessible it is to then go in and create uh, a virtual reality experience. So I'm just going to alt and tab back into Revit, so we have a live interface between Revit and Enscape. And I'm simply going to press uh, a couple of buttons. I'm going to go into my settings. Um, we can leave global illumination on when we're in the VR, but it's not, uh, the technology is not quite there to be able to do that yet. Um, there's not even, a, I'm running a 1080 in this particular machine. Um, there's, there's no card that will be able to support that at the moment. So I'm just going to drop the performance down to high, which turns global illumination off. Um, and then we're going to just literally click enable on the virtual reality headset. For your benefit, I'll hold the tab back into the Revit window, and you'll be able to see as soon as I put the headset up that we are live into the virtual environment. So uh, I'm just going to take my glasses off, stick the headset on now, try and find where my controllers are, and try not to uh, make too much of a fool of myself and fall over. So uh, I'm live inside of Revit, I can see my controllers here, and I can see that I am within the model. Um, you get a really good sense of scale, a really good sense of size. Using the controllers, we have the ability to navigate around, so I can pan myself up and down. Um, I can move myself forwards and backwards. Um, if you're new to virtual reality, that can be a little bit strange, the fact that you're not moving, but the camera is moving around the scene. Um, but you do get used to it. Um, it's just a case of the, the more you do it, the more you get used to it. So 
Um, we can just navigate around and start having a look around the model to see what's going on. Um, I can also move around the room, so the Vive particularly has very, very good um, um, sensor tracking, so room scale. So as you can see, I can walk around with the headset on, um, and that does a really good job again of, of sensing the scale. I'm just going to head over here, up onto this balcony, and just uh, have a look down into the model. As well as moving around, by the way, if you don't like that, uh, that sense of moving around, I have a teleporter. So I can just hold down a, a button on my controller, on my, uh, um, my HTC One, if you like, um, and, and be able to navigate around using the, uh, the controller. Um, I kind of do a mixture of both. It's easier sometimes to just get up here and, and have a look what's going on. So uh, I'm going to get myself down onto the floor next to this, uh, this person here. Um, and what I'm going to do for a second is just take the headset off, because I showed you a second ago that we have a live link. It's good timing, I'm looking straight at the camera. And um, that we have a live link between the likes of Revit and Enscape. So I just want to demonstrate that very quickly because this is where this product really, really um, comes to life. So I'm going to try and just alt and tab back into Revit. Again, I'm not closing Enscape. Um, I'm going to then do a control tab to switch to a floor plan. Um, and just note those escalators. Those are the escalators I've just come up near. Um, so directly inside of Revit, I'm going to just select both of those escalators and make a change, make a modeling change. In this case, I'm just going to do something silly like move the escalators all the way down the corridor there. Um, I could draw a new piece of geometry. I could change a material, add a door, move a window, change the size of a family, swap out a family, anything like that. Um, I'll then tap back to Revit and you'll see straight away that the, the escalators are gone. So if I head straight across into my virtual reality environment, um, once again, I can show off the, the room scale of the HTC because without being able to see, I can find and pick up both of my, uh, my controllers, doesn't matter where they are on the room, and I can see that the escalators are, are now gone. Um, they're now sat over there because that's where I told them to go inside of, uh, inside of Revit. So it is really a live visual experience, whether you are doing a photo realistic render without the virtual reality, or whether you want to um, show your clients their building, their designs, or, or their ideas before they are a reality, we can do that now um, really quickly without even leaving our desks using the likes of Revit um, and, um, and uh, Enscape. So just really wanted to do that really quickly, um, just to give you an idea about how that's going to work and how that can help you. Um, if you want any more information, get in touch.